After All by Henry Lawson Read for LibriVox.org by Brian Edwards After All The brooding ghosts of Australian night have gone from the bush and town. My spirit revives in the morning breeze, though it died when the sun went down. The river is high and the stream is strong, and the grass is green and tall and I fain would think that this world of ours is a good world after all. The light of passion in dreamy eyes, and a page of truth well read, the glorious thrill in a heart grown cold of the spirit I thought was dead, a song that goes to a comrade's heart, and a tear of pride let fall, and my soul is strong, and the world to me is a grand world after all. Let our enemies go by their own dull tracks, and theirs be the fault or shame. The man is bitter against the world who has only himself to blame. Let the darker side of the past be dark, and only the good recall. For I must believe that the world, my dear, is a kind world after all. It may well be that I saw too plain, and it may be I was blind. But I'll keep my face to the dawning light that the devil may stand behind. Though the devil may stand behind my back, I'll not see his shadow fall, but read the signs in the morning stars of a good world after all. Rest, for your eyes are weary, girl. You have driven the worst away. The ghost of the man I might have been is gone from my heart today. We'll live for life, and the best it brings till our twilight shadows fall. My heart grows brave, and the world, my girl, is a good world after all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Australian Girl by Ethel Castilla Read for LibriVox.org by David Butler she has a beauty of her own, a beauty of a paler tone than English bells. The southern sun and southern air have kissed her cheeks until they wear the dainty tints that oft appear on rosy shells. Her frank, clear eyes bespeak a mind old world traditions fail to bind. She is not shy or bold, but simply self-possessed. Her independence adds a zest unto her speech, her piquant jest, her quaint reply. O'er classic volume she will pour with joy, and some scholastic lore will often gain. In sports she bears away the bell, nor under music's siren spell to dance divinely, flirt as well, does she disdain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beneath the Wattle Boughs by Francis Tyrrell Gill Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Burgoyne The wattles were sweet with September's rain. We drunk in their breath and the breath of the spring. Our pulses are strong with the tide of life, I said, and one year is so swift a thing. The land all around was yellow with bloom, the birds in the branches sung joyous and shrill. The blue range rose against the blue of the sky, yet she sighed, but death may be stronger still. Then I reached and gathered a blossomy bough, and divided its clustering sprays in twain. As a token for each, I closed one in her hand, till we come to the end of the year again. Then the years sped on, strung high with life, and laughter and gold were the gifts they gave, till I chanced one day on some pale dead flowers, and spake, shaking and white, one more gift I crave. Nay, 
a shadow voice in the air replied, Neath the blossoming wattles you'll find a grave. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mulga Bill's Bicycle by Andrew Barton Banjo Patterson Read for LibriVox.org by Brian Edwards Mulga Bill's Bicycle T'was Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk that caught the cycling craze. He turned away the good old horse that served him many days. He dressed himself in cycling clothes resplendent to be seen. He hurried off to town and bought a shining new machine, and as he wheeled it through the door with the air of lordly pride, the grinning shop assistant said, Excuse me, can you ride? See here, young man, said Mulga Bill, from Walgett to the sea, from Coinroy's Gap to Castlereagh, there's none can ride like me. I'm good all round at everything, as everybody knows. Although I'm not the one to talk, I hate the man that blows. But riding is my special gift, my chiefest sole delight. Just ask a wild duck, can it swim? A wild cat, can it fight? There's nothing clothed in hair or hide, or built of flesh or steel. There's nothing walks or jumps or runs, on axle, hoof or wheel. But what I'll sit it, while hide will hold, and girths and straps are tight. I'll ride this here two-wheel concern, Right straight away at sight. Twas Mulgabill from Eagle Hawk that sought his own abode, that perched above the dead man's creek beside the mountain road. He turned the cycle down the hill and mounted for the fray, but ere he'd gone a dozen yards, it bolted clean away. It left the track and through the trees just like a silver streak. It whistled down the awful slope towards the dead man's creek. It shaved the stump by half an inch, it dodged a big white box. The very wallaroos in fright went scrambling up the rocks. The wombats hiding in their caves dug deeper underground, as Mulga Bill, as white as chalk, sat tight to every bound. It struck a stone and gave a spring that cleared a fallen tree. It raced beside a precipice as close as close could be. Then as Mulga Bill let out one last despairing shriek, it made a leap of twenty feet into the dead man's creek. T'was Mulga Bill from Eagle Hawk that slowly swam ashore. He said, I've had some narrow shaves and lively rides before. I've rode a wild wood round the yard to win a five-pound bet, but this was the most awful ride that I've accounted yet. I'll give that two-wheel bout law best. It's shaken all my nerve to feed it whistle through the air and plunge and buck and swerve. It's safe at rest in Dead Man's Creek. We'll leave it lying still. A horse's back is good enough henceforth for Mulga Bill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Country by Dorothea McKellar Read for LibriVox.org by Larissa Jaworski of Brisbane, Australia My Country The love of field and coppice, of green and shaded lanes, of ordered woods and gardens is running in your veins. Strong love of grey-blue distance, brown streams and soft dim skies. I know I cannot share it, my love is otherwise. I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons, I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. A stark white ring of barked forest, all tragic to the moon, the sapphire misted mountains, the hot gold hush of noon, green tangle of the brushes where lithe lianas coil, and orchids deck the treetops and ferns the warm dark soil. Core of my heart, my country, her pitiless blue sky, when sick at heart around us we see the cattle die. But then the grey clouds gather, and we can bless again the drumming of an army, the steady soaking rain. Core of my heart, my country, land of rainbow gold, 
for flood and fire and famine, she pays us back threefold. Over the thirsty paddocks, watch after many days the filmy veil of greenness that thickens as we gaze. An opal-hearted country, a willful, lavish land, all you who have not loved her, you will not understand. Though earth holds many splendours, wherever I may die, I know to what brown country my homing thoughts will fly. Dorothea McKellar End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Out Back by Henry Lawson Read for LibriVox.org by Brian Edwards Out Back the old year went, and the new returned, in the withering weeks of drought. The check was spent that the shearer earned, and the sheds were all cut out. The publican's words were short and few, and the publican's looks were black, and the time had come, as the shearer knew, to carry his swag out back. For time means tucker and tramp you must, when the scrubs and the plains are wide, with seldom a track that a man can trust or mountain peak to guide. All day long in the dust and heat, when summer is on the track, with stinted stomach and blistered feet, they carry their swags out back. He tramped away from the shanty there, when the days were long and hot, with never a soul to know or care if he died on the track or not. The poor of the city have friends in woe, no matter how much they lack. But only God and the swagman know how a poor man fares out back. He begged his way on the parched Peru and the Warrego tracks once more, and lived like a dog as the swagmen do till the western station shore. But men were many and sheds were full, for work in the town was slack. The traveller never got hands in wool, though he tramped for a year out back. In stifling noons, when his back was wrung by its load and the air seemed dead, and the water warmed in the bag that hung to his aching arm like lead, or in times of flood when plains were seas and the scrubs were cold and black, he ploughed in mud to his trembling knees and paid for his sins out back. He blamed himself in the year too late, in the heaviest hours of life, "'Twas little he dreamed that a shearing mate had care of his home and wife. "'There are times when wrongs from your kindred come, and treacherous tongues attack "'when a man is better away from home and dead to the world out back. "'And dirty and careless and old he wore, as his lamp of hope grew dim. "'He tramped for years till the swag he bore seemed part of himself to him. "'As a bullock drags in the sandy ruts, he followed the dreary track.' with never a thought but to reach the huts when the sun went down out back. It chanced one day when a north wind blew in his face like a furnace breath. He left the track for a tank he knew, t'was a short cut to his death. For the bed of the tank was hard and dry and crossed with many a crack, and oh, it's a terrible thing to die of thirst in a scrub out back. A drover came, but the fringe of law was eastward many a mile, he never reported the thing he saw, for it was not worth his while. The tanks are full and the grass is high in the mulga off the track, where the bleaching bones of a white man lie by his mouldering swag out back. For time means tucker and tramp they must, where the plains and the scrubs are wide, with seldom a track that a man can trust, or a mountain peak to guide. All day long in the flies and heat, the men of the outside track with stinted stomachs and blistered feet, must carry their swags out back. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Waif by A. C. Smith Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Burgoyne He went into the bush and passed out of the sight of living men. None knows the nook that held him last, none ever saw his face again. It may be in the wildering wood he wandered, weary, spent of breath, till the all-mastering solitude sunk to the deeper hush of death. 
Perchance he crawled where the low bush, more verdant, whispered streams were nigh. Hopeful, but desperate, made a rush, and found, O oh God, the bed was dry. He was a waif, and friends had none. Who knows but in some distant land a mother mourns her errant son, a sister longs to clasp his hand. He was a waif, but with him died, a world of yearnings deep within, yearning to loftiest things allied, but wrecked by cruel fate or sin. None heard the lone one's dying prayer, save infinite pity bending o'er, who haply bore him quietly were, they hunger and they thirst no more. O ye vast woods, what fond life dreams ye close, what broken lives ye hide, darkly absorbed like hopeful streams, that in dry desert lands subside? Stranger the tales ye could unfold, than wilder romancer ever penned, remaining buried in the mould, till time shall cease and mystery end. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.